So like Erica said, I'm John Rabel, and uh, this is, like she said, it's meant to be more of a beginning, beginning look at uh, Python and using the Canvas APIs. So this is a, a, a brief overview of what we're going to go to over today. I'm going to talk about how I got into this. Um, I'm going to show you where to start because that is the most difficult place and the difficult thing to find out is, okay, I want to go do this. Where do I go? And also talk about using the Canvas APIs and then putting it all, all together at the end. Uh, I posted in the Canvas course. Uh, I'll show some examples and then um, we'll have uh, questions at the end. So anybody recognize any of these characters? Okay, so we've got Thor. First of all, I was not born the god of thunder. So he's an Asgardian. He's got the, the mythical hammer. Um, kind of, uh, I wasn't, the image up here on the right is Captain America being injected by super soldier serum. Try and say that five times fast. I was not Peter Parker bitten by a radioactive spider. And I did not fall into a vat of chemicals. So we're talking about superpowers and acquiring them. So they got them the easy way. So this session is more like Tony Stark. It's because he's Iron Man, he built everything. And I love the quote from the first Iron Man movie saying, you name it, he can build it in a cave with scraps. Obadiah Stane says that. It's like, why can't you do this? He built this with a box of scraps. So that's kind of my philosophy uh, going forward with, with Python uh, and the Canvas APIs is that all of this just it, all this didn't come naturally to me, so I'm going to share my story and my experiences. So I started playing with Python and the APIs uh, about October 2013, so it hasn't really been that long, not even a full year. I did have HTML experience. Uh, I did make web pages for my department. I've been with my department for about 10 years in various roles. Uh, so I did learn HTML kind of on the, on the spot, on the job, no formal training whatsoever. And then I didn't have any uh, programming experience, but I always wanted to build stuff, kind of like Tony. He's, always, he's a tinkerer, but I don't have a fancy basement with exotic cards, cars and a robot. Um, does anybody recognize this picture? It's Monty Python, uh, specifically the quest for the Holy Grail. There we go. So I'm going to talk a little bit about why I chose Python. And it's, it's interesting, Python, actually, for those who, who don't know, Python got its name. The, the, the group of developers actually really loved Monty Python uh, growing up. So that's how Python actually got its name as a programming language. A little fun fact. So why did I choose to start with Python? So two main reasons. First is readability. Um, you've seen code that I've looked at it, and it just looks like a foreign language to me. It, where do I start? Do I start left to right, or do I go right to left? You know, what are all these indentations? What are all these different colors? So first of all, you know, it's, it's like having neat handwriting. I think that's how, um, that's what really drew me to Python. And then also it's modular design. So for instance, you don't have to know everything in Python. There's been a lot of development built into the software and a lot of third party developers. And I'm going to talk about um, modules uh, later on in the presentation. But it's, so I only have to master certain skills and then I'm being able to bring in other resources that will do the work for me. And then also, um, why Python 2.7? And this is kind of like a, a battle between like HTML4 and HTML5, where some of the standards, you know, everybody says, oh, this is HTML5 compliant and so on and so forth. But what people don't really know is HTML5 isn't fully fleshed out yet. So it's got some standards but none of them are, are implemented all over the place. So a lot of people are still using HTML4. So Python has the latest stable release is 2.7 in the 2 series, and that's what most of the modules and a lot of the um, 
documentation and so on and so forth is built around is 2.7. But and then Python 3 um, changed a lot of that. So it, it's funny just watching people uh, on the internet just say, okay, the 2.7 is awesome. Some people saying um, Python 3 is much better. You guys are losers. Get with the program. It's just funny just kind of watching from afar. But, uh, but I s chose to stick with 2.7 because of the modules that I use only support 2.7 at this time. Um, this is another reason, if, if, I'm sorry if this is, if you can't see towards the back. On the left, um, I just wanted to show you some of the readability of Python in the modular design of Python versus a programming language like Java. On the left is Java. So that looks Chinese to me. On the right is just one line to do the same of everything on the left. So it really, really saves a lot of space in your, in your coding and in your programs. So the first programming tasks out there is to actually just print something. And, uh, and uh, the program, programmers use hello world. Like, hi everybody. That's uh, the same type of, uh, of, of comment. So it, I just found this graphic and, and I just wanted to show you that's why I don't really want to learn Java. But I'm not saying anything bad about it I, for, for any uh, Java programmers in the room, but um, it's just something that's, that's much, more, uh, much more simple. So where to start? Yes, sir. What's that? Why not, why not Ruby? Well, that's a great question. Um, to be honest with you, I didn't really look into it. Um, uh, in my particular situation, I know Canvas is built on Ruby. Um, and it, in my uh, particular department, um, Python is kind of the standard language that a lot of our programmers use and a lot of our custom applications are built in. So I had a built-in uh, knowledge bank in my department that I could actually go to and ask questions. And uh, so th that's pretty much why I, I chose Python. I'm not saying anything bad about the, any other language. Yes, sir? Yes. You get a button. There you go. But uh, yes, it is true. It is built in. That's actually on my next slide. Yes, requests. I will give you a button in a little bit. So I, I need to ration my buttons. Um, so where to start? So if you have no experience whatsoever, um, this is a great site called Learn Python the Hard Way, which is actually not true. Um, let's see. This is a great. This is a great site. It's free for all of the, uh, basically, just these tutorials. But um, this programmer uh, made all sorts of video tutorials that you can, you can buy an ebook um, for about $30. Or you can just go through all these various exercises. One of the, the hardest things starting out for me is I started with the MIT OpenCourseWare's uh, computer programming videos. So I saw a guy that that uh, originally learned Cobalt a long time ago with a chalkboard trying to explain tuples. And that's just not my learning style. Um, so even though it's important to know all of that stuff, um, this website is amazing. It's got 50 um, different exercises. Uh, another one is Code Academy. Um, this is a much more uh, robust than, um, than, uh, um, than the uh, learning Python the hard way. Uh, they have a course that will give you badges. I know uh, badges are all the rage right now. Uh, so you can get badges for doing a certain number of exercises. You can get badges for completing. Um, and it, it's very, very, very well done and very comprehensive. So if I've gone through tutorials and stuff and I have a question, Stack Overflow is a great website to just browse if you have questions. 
So this is a great resource. It just doesn't, uh, this website just doesn't handle Python, it handles all languages. So whenever you type in a question, you want to include the word Python because it'll pick up on um, specific um, answers relating to Python. And then, of course, the last one is the Canvas API documentation, which I'll go into um, actually in a little bit. So those are the big three areas, and all of this is on the, um, the PowerPoints located in the Canvas course, and there's also a handout uh, in there as well. So that's Python. Now you need to get it set up on your computer. So if you have a Mac or if you're running Linux, like the gentleman over here said, it's built in. It's built into a program called Terminal. For those of you in the, the PC world, that's the same as the command prompt. So that's another reason why I, I stuck with 2.7. And then also, there's a program called Text Wrangler that's really nifty to um, actually write your Python code in. It's a, it's a Swiss army knife of, of notepads of a, of a text editor. So for Windows, it's a little bit more complicated, but there's, I've linked to some great uh, tutorials where to download it and how to install it. And then the, uh, the Windows version of um, Text Wrangler is Notepad++, which you may already have installed um, on your Windows machine. So talking again about modules, um, with modules are prepackaged um, pre uh, bundles of code that you would just need to import into your script and then using, um, using some, uh, you know, using the syntax of that module um, or the, the language of that module, then it takes your code from writing out all of this code to literally a couple of lines. So it saves you a lot of time. And, in, and to uh, bring in different modules, uh, you need to install a software called PIP, a module called PIP. And then to install other modules um, from, the, from the command prompt or from terminal, you just type in PIP install in the module name. It goes out and finds it and brings it in for you. That's the automatic easy way. And then um, the module that I use, and I'll, I'll demonstrate in a little bit, is called requests. It's an one easy way to make um, API calls to Canvas, and I'll show you how to set that all up. So now we talked a little bit about Python. Now let's talk a little bit about the Canvas APIs. Does anybody have any experience with the Canvas APIs? OK, a little bit. So I like to think about like the Riddler, sticking with the superhero or supervillain. Nobody's really talked about villains yet. So I, I sense a little biased. So think about the Canvas APIs in this. You're asking a question. So, and then you receive a set of answers. So it's kind of like the Riddler, like you ask them a, a straight question, but sometimes you don't get a straight response. Or it gives you a set of answers. And you have to kind of comb through it and say, is this what I'm really looking for? So the most important thing you can do with thinking about using the Canvas APIs is really hone in on what you're looking for. What question are you really asking? Because you may have to ask multiple questions to get the answer you want. Or you ask one question and then you get the first couple of sentences of the uh, answer sentence. And then you have to ask another, you have to ask a follow-up question and say, hey, you know, what's the rest of the sentence? And I'll, I'll demonstrate that in a little bit. So quick terminology. There's no quiz, even though it'd be cool to do the mobile poll thing that was just announced. So API, you know, this term is thrown around all the time. This is actually what it stands for, Application Programming Interface. So you don't really need to don't go around, don't go back to your universities and say, oh, hey, you know, how about that application programming interface here? You know, they'll just kind of look at you funny. So, um, and the Canvas APIs deals in a, in a format called JSON. So basically, um, if you attended any of the other um, sessions that talked about standards and open standards, 
And JSON is a standard in terms of how the information is sent from Canvas back to your script. So every time you make an API call, it's going to give you the same format. So that's actually a, a really cool thing. And, when you ter and then you may hear the term API call. So that's actually two terminologies put together. The call is the actual process of the script communicating with Canvas. So it's like, I need an API call to download all of my students. So it's like, OK, I know we're talking about the Canvas APIs, and it's actually doing something to go get the enrollments for the students. So with that, there are two key pieces of information um, to know about the Canvas APIs when, when you start thinking about um, uh, writing one, is that first is a user ID. So every user in Canvas has a unique ID. It's usually like a six or seven digit number, depending on how many um, students you have at your, how many users you have at your institution. And then also when you're dealing with courses, courses have their own unique ID. So for instance, if you go, if you open up Canvas and you have a, if you look up in the URL box, they actually have a great way to learn, okay, what the ID is for a specific object in the course. So for instance, if I go into a course, or if I go into my profile, so um, right here, so this is the courses, so that's my course ID number. User, this is actually my ID number at my institution. So if you go to, uh, if you log in, if you go up to your um, profile in the upper right hand corner and click on that, then you'll get a URL that says whatever your institution's URL slash users slash your number. So that's how you find out um, your particular number. And that's going to come in handy in a little bit. And the same way, going to the, the front page of your course, it's going to have that course ID in the URL. So these are the, t the two basic IDs. There are a lot of different IDs. There's quiz IDs. There's assignment IDs. There's um, page IDs. There's IDs used all across, the all across Canvas. But these are the two basic and the ones that you're going to use the most. Because with the APIs, you have to think of it like a funnel. You're going to start really big in a macro looking at OK, where am I in Canvas? And then you're going to be slowly, slowly getting very more gradual, getting down to specifics. So you start broad, and then you go down to specifics. That's why you have to make a lot of API calls sometimes, because it's not going to give you your answer right away. So when, remember when I went back to the question. So for instance, if I ask this question, I want to see all the courses for a specific teacher. Notice I said teacher and not user. So teacher is actually a role in Canvas. So I want to see all of the courses that um, a teacher is enrolled in. So first, you actually have to look at the Canvas API documentation and see, OK, what API call am I going to use? So let's go take a look at the documentation real quick. And let me zoom in a little bit. So Canvas has done an excellent job of, ha of keeping their documentation up to date, and it's open out here on the internet. So down here on the left are all their areas. They, look, they may look very familiar of the different tools that are in Canvas. So for this one, we're going to be looking at enrollments. And then it's going to give you this huge big area. First, it's going to list all the different API calls at the top. And then it's going to give you these objects. These objects are in the JSON format. So if you notice, the blue up here is the actual, um, is the actual item in Canvas. So current grade, final grade, current score. And this is an enrollment object. This is what we're looking for. So when we go ask the question, like I said, it's going to give you a set of answers. So it's, this is the set of answers. It's going to give you the person's ID. It's going to give you the course ID. It's going to give you the enrollment status. It's going to give you the type. So remember, 
type, we're looking for a teacher type. And the, or the role, I'm sorry. The role, it's going to be the, the type. So it's going to give you all of this information once you make this API call. So we, now that we found the list enrollments, notice it gives you three of them. But we're going to use the one right here because we have the user ID. So we're going to use my user ID and we're going to look at all the courses that I'm enrolled in. So notice all of this down here where it says request parameters. So you notice that the, all of those items in blue, there's a lot of them. So if you want to look for something specific, notice I said teacher enrollment. So I'm going to send Canvas, hey, for this user ID, I'm only looking for courses that they're enrolled as a teacher. That's basically what that means. And you can do that for students. You can do that for TAs. You can do it. The, the possibilities are endless. Well, not endless. That's a mathematical possibility, impossibility. Anyways. So this is basically what I just explained. So it's in the enrollment sections. We're going to the list enrollments API. And then uh, the one thing I wanted to say is we want to get. There's four basic commands. There's get, put, uh, post. Yes, post is an important one. And I always blank on the last one. Delete. Never use delete. Unless you're an admin, that superpower is restricted. So, um, but I'm I'm going to be used. I'm going to be in as a uh, as a teacher. So even though I have like admin powers on the back end, I'm going to be in as my as myself. If I'm just a regular instructor, and they can't delete, well, depending on the settings at your institution, they can only do so much. Um, but notice that the last part is I need to find the user ID. So I found my user ID. Actually, I have it written on this piece of paper. So the next thing you're going to need is a token. It's your credential. It's like your badge, you know, Agents of Shield right there. So you're not going to use your username and password. You're going to be using a, a Canvas token. Now, there are two types of tokens. There's like the master token that, as us normal folk, muggles, don't have access to. But Canvas actually does a really cool thing is each individual user can generate their own token. So it's like giving you your own key to your own house. You're not getting the keys to the mansion. You're getting the keys to like a bedroom or two. So you're able to go and use the APIs for what you particularly have access for. So I can't look in my colleagues' courses. I can only look in my course. So it's all permission-based. And then there's documentation that's really easy on how to generate your own token. And just like a password, don't give it to anybody. So now we've got the two separate elements. And now we need to put them together. So first of all, when we're writing the code, and I'm, I'm going to demonstrate this in a minute, we need to open up Text Wrangler. And then we're going to import requests, because that's the module we're going to use. Then we're going to ask for certain types of information. So we're going to ask for that user ID. And we're going to ask for that token. Because you want to be able to reuse this script, and you don't want to keep having to change the code every single time. Then you're going to write in the API call. And then it's going to send something back. And then depending on your end goal, you can either display it or print it or uh, store it and then, oh, hey, I've got this information. Now maybe I can use this in another API call. So it's just a big, huge chain that can go on and on. So I'm going to get out of the PowerPoint. I'm going to go into Text Wrangler. And voila, I wrote it already. So let me see if I can, I can go into full screen. Maybe this will help. So I know this looks a little, little tiny. I'm, uh, uh, yeah. Option or command. 
option. Yeah. Option and command eight and then option and command eight. Option command eight. Yeah, I'm, it's now, I'm, I'm sorry, it's, it's, a, it's a little small, but I'll, dis, I'll describe it. At the top, what we did is we, uh, on the second line up here, I wrote import requests. Um, so that's what I'm going to do. So I'm bringing in that request module. So I have that functionality right there. So then I'm go, I, I declared a variable called user underscore ID. So that's going to store whatever the person types in. So it's gonna, when you open up terminal, the, um, in the parentheses is what is displayed to the user. It's going to say, hey, please enter a, course, a Canvas course ID or user ID. And then I did the same thing for the token. I declared a variable called token, and then it asked for the token. So you put in the token. And then um, where it says payload, um, this is when I'm using the request module is that's when I'm putting in, oh, hey, that word type, and then I'm putting in teacher enrollment. So I'm saying, okay, I'm only looking for teacher enrollments when I make this API call. And then when it says r equals request dot get, you can pretty much copy and paste this ev into every script you can use. I know there's f more fancier ways you can use it in functions and classes, but I'm just a novice, so I'm just writing everything else out, and that's help that helps me learn. So we're using the dot get, so we're getting something from Canvas, and then you're going to type in your, your Canvas institutional uh, URL. So ours is webcourses.ucf.edu, and it's going to be slash the API slash version one slash users slash, I'm, de I'm declaring, this is where the user ID goes. So I'm declaring the variable, and to do that in Python, or not declaring, I'm using the variable, and then uh, you just use the, uh, the number sign in S. And then you have to say user ID. So that's, that's how can, uh, Python knows to put that number in the URL. And then, of course, the token. So it's getting the, ba the data back. So I'm calling it data. And then I'm going to print it. So I'm going to display the data. However, it's going to send me a block about this big. So I only want the element, I only want the course IDs. So I'm going to do what's called a for loop. So basically, it's going to go through the data, and it's going to look for only the course IDs. And I'm going to print done. So I'm going to get out of full screen mode, and I'm going to demonstrate that in terminal. So um, this one I can make bigger. So this may look like the matrix. So first of all, I need to change the directory and go to where my script is. So to activate the script, uh, I have to type Python first. And then I type in my script name. And I hit return. So it's going to ask me for the canvas my ID, I hit enter, bam, sends me a whole bunch of green text. So this is that big block that I talked about. But notice down at the bottom, I've got a list of like six numbers. So those are all my course IDs. So I use the Canvas API to figure out all of the courses that I'm enrolled in. And then what you can do is take these user IDs and make another API call to actually get the name of the course. So see how sets of information runs from one to the next. Question in the back? Um, the question was, could you export out uh, the text of, of this? Yes. You can, do, you can have it actually write to a text file in the Python code, or using terminal, you can save it. As, as text. So, um, so I do, in various other scripts, I use HTML. I export stuff out to HTML, and it writes to an HTML file. So yes, the, this, this script is available in the course, and I have several other scripts uh, available um, in the course. I know we're really short on time. I just wanted to, um, 
All the rest of the slideshow kind of breaks everything down. And this is what I have written in Python um, already. So I've written a simple script that checks if a student hasn't logged in in X amount of days. Um, download all the current grades for the course. Download all the wiki pages for a course. And then um, two of my more fancy ones I've worked on for months is to check all the external links on a page. So you know in Blackboard we used to have that link checker thing. So I kind of, using another module, I did that. And then also I know a lot of people on the boards have said something about students being able to print all the modules out. So I've actually written a script that you can do it as an instructor. I wouldn't give it to a student, but just kind of the basics and the, the logic of it. So thank you very much for coming today. Um, I'll stick around in the hall for uh, any questions. And then uh, there's a bit.ly link. It's in the course with all this presentation, resources, and some sample scripts for you to play around with.